Common Cause or Burnt Toast. Welcome to our next video on quality improvement. At this point you have already learned about profound knowledge and management by results. This video will focus on the differences between common and special causes in variation in processes. A common cause is an occurrence that is constantly active within a system. A special cause is a new unanticipated emergent or previously neglected occurrence within a system. And so when you think about it, a common cause is able to be predicted. In contrast, a special cause is unpredictable. Let's have Dr. Bachman explain to us a little more about common causes. Hi Ramon. Today we're going to talk about common causes and special causes. The biggest problem in systems is that we react to common causes. I'm going to show you another book, Transforming Performance Measurements. One of the things they have here is a little chapter on looking good rather than being good. Doesn't that sort of intrigue you so you want to read about it? But this is something that I found even more interesting. Unfortunately, Few managers have ever formally learned how to make decisions, much less to make data-based decisions. That is why Dr. Paul Nutt, author of Wall Why Decisions Fail, contends that two out of three managers use failure-prone decision-making practices and that as many as 50% of all managerial decisions fail. One in two decisions fail. You could flip a coin interesting book. Well, Deming thought the same type of thing. He said that what happens is we react to common causes. Common causes, reacting to common causes, is like scraping toast. Burnt toast. So let's look at our workflow here. We have a piece of bread. We put it in the toaster. We toast it. Out comes our bread. There's some variation here. Your job to look good is to make sure that this toast here looks good. So what do you do? You scrape it. Isn't that cool? So we're scraping away, getting it ready. Oh, I guess this isn't going to do too well. Well, we have to look good. So what we need to do is make sure that the people above us know that we're looking good. So we'll just kind of cover it up here. There, that looks we'll good. We'll use a See? different method. We'll use a fork. You know, we got systems and procedures and they said that you won't break the toast if you use this. Isn't it great to have people to help you with your, your uh, scraping burnt toast? How cool is that? Or you can have somebody who comes along and says, you know, you just have to do it faster. Whoops. And we now have it ready. And we can just present it over there and they can put butter on it. Let's put butter on it. And isn't that the perfect piece of toast, kind of? And again, this is what we do all the time. What we're doing is taking care of the burnt toast so we can start the whole process all over again. Well this is how Deming would say we do our decisions. We react to common cause. Most of the data and information that we have is just random variation. It's scraping the toast. What we want to do is we want to go in and take care of the toaster. That's the thing that's causing all the troubles. That's our special cause. Working on the common cause causes us nothing but grief, more waste, a lot of energy, a lot of activities. Now interesting enough, you could use all sorts of quality improvement measures to try to improve how we might get this toast better. But in reality, 
The problem is not in this process. The problem is in the creation of the burnt toast. We need to deal with the toaster. We need to turn the heat down. So as you go through the um, information that Ramon, you're going to show them, we need to separate common cause from special cause. So the next time that you see something where people are reacting to common cause, you can remind them that it's like scraping burnt toast. Ugh. There's a difference between a poorly designed toaster that produces burnt toast and a broken toaster that produces burnt toast. A poorly designed toaster will always produce burnt toast. In contrast, a broken toaster just needs fixing to stop the burnt toast from being produced. A poorly designed toaster will always produce burnt toast, especially when all of its parts are working correctly. And so it's apparent that we can't treat a common cause like a special cause and vice versa. So how do we find a special cause? Well first you have to collect your data and then this data needs to be entered into a chart such as the one depicted. The run chart that you see has a few special parts. It is organized with data points on the y-axis charted along a time period along the x-axis. The center line represents the mean or the average of all the values. And you immediately notice points above and below this center line. These points represent runs or trends in your data. A run is a set of points either all above or all below the median. A trend is a sequence of seven or more continuously increasing or decreasing data points. When speaking about common and special causes, a run chart becomes important because a run of eight or more is often a special cause. Another kind of chart in which to enter data is what is called a control chart. This chart is similar to that of a run chart in that the mean is demarcated by a line. Furthermore, like a run chart, runs and trends can be identified when looking at data points when compared to this mean. What makes the control chart different from a run chart is the demarcation of the upper and lower control limits, which represent three standard deviations above and below the mean. In this way, the control chart helps us to further analyze special causes, as data resulting from a special cause is most likely to fall above or below the upper and lower control limits. While both the run chart and the control chart allow us to analyze data from past events, only the control chart can be used to help predict future data. Nevertheless, these sorts of charts are important because we never want to treat a special cause as if it were a common cause and vice versa. There are lots of ways to look at a control chart and analyze data. Here listed are a few of those ways. By using the example of burnt toast, Dr. Bachman showed us why it is so important to differentiate special cause from common cause. The control chart is a simple yet powerful tool to help you differentiate the two. In light of what we just learned about special and common cause, do you feel middle management's decisions are, on average, correct about 50% of the time? If so, why? Can you give us some examples? 
Deming once said that management responded to common causes as if they were special causes about 90% of the time. Can you think of some examples in your workplace where this has happened? How might you have handled scraping the burnt toast?